Starship is a cross-shell prompt written in Rust, and it's pretty minimalist, and I'm actually really enjoying it so far, so let's have a look. Good afternoon everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So if you've been around for a while, you've probably noticed that a while back I switched from Powerline Shell to this new prompt that I've got here, and this is Starship. So I've made a few changes to it, that I'm going to go over later in the video, but just so you know, this is what the prompt just looks like with my configuration. So if we go to the GitHub page first up, it lists out all the features on here. A lot of these features I've disabled because I don't really care about them. Like, for example, one of the things it can do, I guess the GIF's not up to that point, it can show the current version of, uh, there we go. So if you're doing, say, Ruby development or you're doing Python or something like that, it will show the current version of whatever language you're using. And it, if you come down here, then it'll show you all the languages that it currently supports. It's not as feature complete as what it's based off of, which is a Z shell prompt by the name star something or other. I don't remember the name of it. Let's see if we can find it. It's probably at the bottom. It is inspired by Spaceship, sorry, which is a Z shell prompt, which looks very similar and is far more feature complete. But if you're not using Z shell and you're using bash like I am, then you're probably going to want to use something like this. So if we come over to the configuration page, there's a lot of things that you actually can configure in here. So if you want to disable all of those versions that uh, I've disabled, then you can just come to say, say you want to disable the Python module, then in your config, I can actually bring up my config here. So if we go into here and go to, what have I called it? C R yes that one. So say you want to disable the Python module like I've got disabled, then you just put in brackets Python and then disabled. Same with package and Ruby. I've got pretty much all of them disabled. And by default, I'll show you guys here. So by default, it's on two lines for some reason. I'm not really sure why you'd ever want a prompt on two lines. But if we have a look at that, so if we close that, this. I guess it's not going to reload it that easily. Oh, did I forget to save it? I probably forgot to save it, didn't I? Yes, I forgot to save it. Okay, of course it's not going to work if you do that. So by default, this is what it looks like. So it's on two separate lines, and I really don't like that because there's, especially because of how short the prompt is, there's really no point to actually waste that extra space with another line. So one of the reasons I like this over Powerline is so Powerline, it will show a ton of cool looking stuff, but really it's not that useful. Like I don't really need to know my host name, for example. And the only time this will show the host name is when I believe you are the root user or you have SSH into the system. So I don't have this in my root bash RC, so it's not going to show up if I go root. But if I was to SSH into the system, which I also don't have another system to do that, so I can't really show that. But if you did that, then it would show my host name. So some other stuff you can have on here is you can have your battery, for example. I always run my laptop off of uh, power, so well, off of wall power, so I don't really ever see that. But you can disable that if you want to. One of the cool things, though, is the way it handles git branches. So one of the problems I have with just a default PS1 prompt is you have to do a, lot, a bit of a hack to get the git branch to show up. But if we have a look at what it looks like, if we just re-add that, so I don't have my prompt looking terrible. Close that, okay, cool. So if we cd into my repo, say my ST repo. So it is a power line font, as you can see from these glyphs here. So you will need a power line, or it is a power line prompt, so you will need a power line font, as you can see from this glyph. It handles it really neatly. A lot of prompts will just have a lot of useless extra information, but this one it's just it's just everything that you need and nothing else. And I think I think that really helps actually, because a lot of the time you're gonna be writing out fairly long commands, and if you have a tiling window manager like I do, you're not always going to have the entire screen for one terminal. And you, I don't know, I don't really like having my commands go over two lines. It makes it a bit more difficult to debug them. But like this, I don't really ever run into that issue just because of how little space is actually taken up by the prompt. So if we cd into a different repo, let's see if we have one that has changes to it. Probably my dot files. Yeah, okay. So if you have changes to a repo, it'll show a little exclamation mark. And if we commit those changes, or if we add those changes, then it'll put a plus there. 
And then if we have changes to, I guess like a message. Yeah, cool. That's, and then if you have something to push to your remote, it changes to a up arrow. So as I said, this is a power line style prompt. So you will need a power line font. I'm running source code pro as my main font. And because I'm using ST, I've got a backup font that has power line gifs in it. I'm, I think my backup font right now is hack nerd font or something like that. And basically any power line prompt will, or any power line font will work. You'll just need something to handle those glyphs. So if you don't like the order that the prompt is actually in, you can actually reorder that. And if we come into the config here, so if we look here, so if you provide this array here, you can actually reorder it. So I don't really care about reordering because I think it's in a fairly solid order, but if you don't like it, then you can change it. Or you've also got all of the different prompt elements here. So if you're not sure what the prompt elements are called, you can come in here and actually see what they're called. I believe they are all the same as their module name. So if we go to one that has a space in it, yeah, they're all the same as their module name. So as long as you know what the module names are, you can reorder them fairly simply by just putting this array in. So I think that's pretty much everything for the things you can do to it. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done to this project because there's a lot of features that are missing. If we check out the, the, um, the Z shell version, the spaceship prompt. So as we can see, it has a lot more language support and there's a lot of things that it can do that Starship can't yet. But because I disabled them, I don't really care either way. Like this has Xcode support if you're on a, a Mac, I guess. And I think that having something like this available with Bash actually is pretty cool. Because yeah, Z Shell is great, but not everyone is running Z Shell. I might switch to it at some point, but for now I'm not. So if you want to install Starship, what you're going to do is if you're on on anything really, you can just download the source code and compile it with uh, just using cargo install Starship. Or if you're on a Mac, you can use Homebrew. If you're on Arch, it is available in the AUR, so you can just download it straight from that. And I f don't think it has, it, yeah, it doesn't show how to do it on Ubuntu. So if you're on Ubuntu or something like that, it might be available with apt-get, or you might have to just install it from the source code directly. So to actually get this prompt working, it's fairly simple. So at the end of your bash RC, you just put this line in, this eval, then the uh, evaluation format to run a command, and then this command here. So I can show what that actually looks like in my bash RC if you are not 100% sure from that right there. So if we go down to where it says Starship, so last line of my bash RC, I've got this line right here. So eval, quotation marks, dollar sign, brackets, starship, init bash, brackets, and then quotation marks. So if you're on fish, you can also do it like this. It's fairly similar. And Z shell, it is identical to how you do it on bash because you're just running POSIX. This is a, just a POSIX compliant uh, command here. Fish isn't POSIX compliant, so you have to do about it a bit of extra stuff to it. So I didn't actually show you where the config file is stored. I just instantly went to it uh, because I have a LF binding for it. So it is in your config folder. And if we look in here, the file is just called starship.toml. I don't believe this file is generated by default. You're going to have to create it yourself. But if you just call it starship.toml, then it will work and you can start configuring your Starship install. I really like this prompt because it is fairly minimal. It doesn't take up a lot of my screen, which makes it actually really useful for videos. The problem with Powerline prompt or Powerline shell in videos, it kind of just extends across half the screen. And once I've zoomed in on my prompt, it kind of makes it difficult to keep my commands on one line, which makes them a little harder to read and a bit harder for you guys to actually keep track of what's happening in the video. So if you want to use Starship, go ahead and use it. If you want to support the project, then I will leave the link to the GitHub page down below. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below, letting me know what you think of this video or what you want to see me do next time. If you've got any suggestions for programs for me to look at, let me know and I'll check them out maybe. So if you want to see more from the channel, remember to subscribe and hit the little bell icon below and you might see more updates. But if you don't, because YouTube can't be trusted to actually push updates, then follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably see updates there. Unless for some reason they stop pushing updates, which they might. It's very possible. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out. <laughs>